Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends of Jesus, our Savior, he was a professional thief. His name evoked fear throughout the Wild West. He terrorized Wells Fargo's stagecoach line, roaring like a tornado and spooking most rugged cowboys. During his reign from 1875 to 1883, he sold hundreds of thousands of dollars. No victim ever saw him. No artist ever sketched him. No sheriff could ever track his trail. His name? Black Bart. Now John introduces another Black Bart. If you've ever felt shame and disgrace, it was his whisper that crushed your heart. If you ever felt alone or abandoned, it was all according to his plan. If you ever felt useless and no good, it was his accusing finger in your face. He doesn't want, just want your money. This Black Bart comes to kill, steal, and destroy everything. What's his name? Guilt. Maybe there's someone on our planet who hasn't known guilt or remorse or has an ongoing note to himself, doesn't have an ongoing note to yourself, you're worthless. I've never met that person. So what sucked you under? A backstreet brawl? Did you take something that wasn't yours? Or maybe your guilt isn't the result of a moment. Maybe it's a season in life. You failed as a parent or you blew it in your career. You squandered your youth or your money or both. The result? Guilt. We're in a series called Witnesses to Christ. Today we meet Peter. Peter is in the courtyard of Caiaphas. And in that courtyard we see guilt. Peter's guilt in our own. Beyond the courtyard, though, we see grace. Grace for Peter and grace for us. So to get some context, we rewind the tape. I know some of you understand that. And go back to Gethsemane, where we hear the claim. Peter said to him, Lord, why can, we, why can I not follow you now? I will, lay my, I will lay down my life for you. Jesus and Peter had been through so much together. Three years earlier, Jesus was walking on the north side of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus sees Peter fishing with his brother Andrew and calls them to follow. I will make you fishers of men. One day, about a year later, Peter follows Jesus onto the Sea of Galilee during a huge storm. Peter walks on water. And then he begins to sink. Jesus immediately reaches out his hand and takes hold of Peter and saves him. At one point, Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. At another point, Jesus takes Peter along with James and John to see his glory on the Mount of Transfiguration. And then Jesus invites the same trio to, the, to see his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. No wonder Peter makes the claim, I will lay down my life for you. We've all made that claim. If you've been confirmed, do you intend to live according to the word of God in faith and word and deed, remain true to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? And we said, I do. Will you take this man to be your wedded husband? And many of you women said, I do. Will you take this woman to be your wedded wife? And we men said, I do. The claim, the claim, the claim, that's easy. As the events in the courtyard unfold, it's like watching a crack in the house foundation slowly spreading. A servant girl comes up to Peter and says, you also are not one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. The first crack. Then Peter stands by a fire, keeps warm. Some bystanders say to him, you also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. The second crack. 
when there are enough cracks, there will always be a collapse. Always. And here it is. One of Malchus' relatives spots Peter and asks him, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Let those three words sink in. A rooster crowed. The result? Guilt. For us, the collapse might happen when we just say one more lie, one more drink, one more fling, one more look, crack, crack, crack. But one thing leads to another, and just one more, until there are enough cracks. And when there are more, there will always be a collapse, always. Then what? Enter the G word. The G word? guilt. Who loves leftovers? Many people don't, but I don't mind them. However, there comes a time where they don't taste good anymore. There's a story about a mom who fixed chicken. The family loved chicken. And so they then had chicken sandwiches, chicken soup, chicken casserole. Soon the chickens started showing up in souffles, sauces, and salads. They even had chicken in their snacks. After a while, it was too much. It didn't taste good anymore. Peter, after the rooster crowed, felt like a leftover, a has-been, a left out, rejected. Forgotten in the back of the refrigerator, that's what guilt does to us. Guilt turns us into miserable, weary, angry, stressed-out people. Who loves leftovers? God does. And God gives us grace. Grace? Did someone say grace? How does that happen? Fast forward to John chapter 21, 21 where Jesus asked Peter if Peter loves him. Jesus asked the question three times, once for every time Peter denied his Lord. And each time Peter confesses, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Peter confessed his guilt. What gave him the faith to do that? While Peter was denying Jesus, Jesus was suffering for Peter. See, Jesus doesn't wait till we get it all together. He doesn't wait until we overcome our own temptations or fight our demons or conquer our sin. God shows his love for us while that we were still sinners. Christ died for us. In our courtyard, we see guilt. Beyond the courtyard, at the cross, we see grace. And grace means what? The comeback. Who preaches the sermon on Pentecost? Peter. Whose sermon converts 3,000 people that day? Peter's. Who writes two books in the New Testament? Peter. Listen closely, though. Comebacks do not depend on how much we love Jesus. Comebacks depend on how much Jesus loves us. Comebacks don't depend on what we do for Jesus. Comebacks depend on what Jesus does for us. Comebacks don't depend on us giving our life for Jesus. Comebacks depend on Jesus giving up his life for us. Remember Black Bart? He was finally nothing to be afraid of. When the authorities finally tracked him down, they didn't find a bloodthirsty bandit. They filed, find, found a mild-tempered businessman from Decatur, Illinois. The man pictured storming the Wild West on his horse was so afraid of riding horses, he rode around in a horse-drawn buggy. Black Bart was Charles Bowles, the bandit who never once fired a bullet because he never loaded his gun. See guilt for who he really is. A deadly monster? You bet. A faint, painful feeling that can do great harm? No doubt. The tormentor of our souls? Count on it. But also count on this. Guilt is a defeated enemy who has no bullets left in his gun. And so what does that mean for us? Our story isn't over when Jesus is in it. 
And that's great. Because we can all come back from guilt. How? The best G word of all, grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. To God be the glory. Amen. And now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds united in Christ Jesus, both now and forever. Amen.